There are many, many different ways to look at the world. Today, we will all be taking a journey with 13-year-old Sophia as she questions the mythical worldview of her sister and begins to think philosophically. So get ready, start buckling up your seatbelt, and then unbuckle it as we take you out of your seat on a journey of transcendence through much questioning, a lot of very, very deep thought, and a whole lot of confusion. But don't worry, Sophia and I will be here to help you, step by step, through this journey of thought into a realm beyond our imagination. Welcome to the Philosophical Worldview. Let us begin the story of Philosophical Sophia. One beautiful Sunday morning, sisters Mary and Sophia are sitting in the pews of a church. They are listening to a traditional hymn following the story of Job. Sophia hears a harmony that is beautiful and perfect. After some thought, she leans over to her sister and asks her if she noticed the same harmony as well. Sophia realizes that her sister is lost in the moment, too busy living in the ancient hymn to give any weight to what her sister just said. In this instance, Mary is gaining meaning by drawing near to the story within the hymn as she connects with the narrative of Job's suffering. Mary has recently injured herself, losing her scholarship, and has an overwhelming sense of hopelessness. But Job experienced many hardships as well. Mary then realizes that she is the same as him and God has set it to be that way. It then becomes impossible for Mary to separate her difficulties from the difficulties Job experienced as she is a mythical thinker. She lives her life through a story that has already happened. Her sister, Mary, is stuck in the old hymn and cannot escape the myth. Mythical thinkers cannot question about anything, only what to do next. Sophia, however, has now stepped outside of the story of the hymn and even out of her current reality as she begins to question the idea of harmony. What is it about harmony that makes it so appealing, she asks. Sophia's act of questioning here displays the first true mark of a philosophical mind, to question something and separate oneself from their immediate reality. Whoa, 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 let's take a pause. There are many steps to becoming a philosophical thinker. The first step that Sophia shows here is to question everything. A philosophical thinker wants to have a world that is predictable and orderly. Let's push play and continue with Sophia as she delves deeper into her philosophical worldview. Progressing deeper into thought, Sophia reflects back on other moments of experiencing harmony in her life. She recalls a meal she made for her family in which all of the spices in the soup balanced out with the sweet French bread creating a harmonious sensation for her taste buds. She also recalls feeling an overwhelming sense of harmony between her family members on their family game night where they all were fully enjoying each other. Yet, Sophia knows that experiences of harmony exist outside of her own. She thinks of factory workers that place packages on a conveyor belt just before the machine arm picks them up in a harmonious rhythm. Sophia thinks of a painting with colors of cool blues and mellow purples that blend together on the canvas. All of these thoughts are confusing. Sophia's brain is bursting with new information. There are so many instances of harmony and they are all occurring at separate times and evoking separate senses. Sophia becomes increasingly frustrated and has now shown another key characteristic of the philosophical thinker, being discontent with a myriad of instances. In this case, all these instances involve harmony. Let's take another pause. What exactly does it mean to be discontent? Remember when Sophia began to question what harmony actually meant? She wasn't content with the meaning that the mythical worldview provided her. The philosophical mind does not settle for temperamental moments of reality. It searches for unity and consistency that connects all of these moments. Let's see how Sophia uses her discontentment to become a philosophical thinker. Let's push play. So as Sophia continues on in her journey through thought, she tries to take yet another step back and finds what similarity lies at the core of all of these instances of harmony. She asks, what is it that stands the test of time and remains unchanged? Here, Sophia is going through the philosophical process of abstracting. Pause again. I know, I know, you guys are getting sick of me pausing the story. I just wanna make sure you truly understand what being a philosophical thinker is all about. Think of abstraction like continuing to take steps back in order to see all the different experiences of harmony, in Sophia's case, to look for what lies at the metaphorical heart of each of the instances. Use your brain here. Abstracting is basically removing the senses and using your intellect to discover what the world is truly about. Let's get back to Sophia and see where she goes from here. 
By taking steps back and searching for the heart of each instance of harmony, Sophia can now see a common thread between these separate occurrences that point to a larger, ideal form of harmony. Distinguishing this ideal form of harmony introduces Sophia to the realm of forms. As a philosophical thinker, Sophia acknowledges that this higher realm does not allow harmony to be defined by any of her senses or any worldly experiences. It is an abstract concept of the purest, most real, and most perfect form of harmony. And although the moments reflecting harmony are compelling, Sophia knows that they do not even begin to scratch the surface of the realm of forms, which is truly beyond anything we can imagine. The two complementary chords from the church choir hymn, the joy evoked on family game night, the industrial cooperation of man and machine, the delicious flavors coming together, and the cohesive colors in the painting all merely reflect the essence of harmony, and therefore are not within the realm at all. This final destination of the realm of forms, it's not something we can really describe, draw, or even imagine. We point this out not because we want to overwhelm or confuse you, but because the realm of forms is so abstract, vague, and beyond reality that we cannot even imagine it adequately. Because it transcends our world, it is inevitable that the common man would be overwhelmed and confused by our inability to grasp it. Aside for our example of harmony, there are other concepts like beauty, peace, and justice, each of which has its own myriad of earthly experiences. Beauty, for example, may be reflected in a poem, a woman, or a rainbow. Peace could be reflected in meditation, the ending of a war, or a spa day. And lastly, Justice could be reflected in a criminal being punished, a winner being rewarded, or sexism being confronted. All of these abstract concepts exist inside the realm of forms along with many, many others. I know this sounds a little confusing, but we're gonna do a quick recap and take a look at how Sophia became a philosophical thinker. Altogether, her story shows us how a philosophical thinker processes thought, starting from their immediate reality and ending all the way in the realm of forms. Let's take a minute to review the process she took to get there. First, Sophia asked a question about the harmony of the church choir that distinguished herself as separate from her current reality. Once outside of her immediate reality in the church, Sophia thought about different moments of harmony and became discontent by their lack of uniformity. They all occurred with different senses and at different times and their sporadicness was not ideal. In order to find unity in these moments of harmony, Sophia had to abstract herself further to take all of these moments in holistically and find the ideal form of harmony that they all attempted to reflect. Finally, she tapped into the oh-so-abstract yet oh-so-real realm of forms. Although Sophia hasn't applied the philosophic mindset to the abstract form of meaning because she is only 13, it is very important to discuss how the philosophical mind finds meaning, or at least attempts to. A philosophical thinker must apply the same steps that Sophia did in order to unveil the concept of meaning. So in the same way that we used questioning about, being discontent with inconsistent moments, and abstracting into the realm of forms for the concept of harmony, we must also do the same for meaning. Starting in our world's reality, Sophia would have to ask questions about what instances are meaningful to her using her discontentment to fuel her abstraction into the realm of forms to arrive at a universal meaning that all life contributes to. The beauty of this mindset is that there is a belief in fulfillment and meaning. There is a sense of wholeness, of consistent meaning that withstands through all of time and unites us all in our lives. Although these facets of meaning might seem all-encompassing, there are multiple reasons why meaning might fail us. The first would be that although the philosophical forms are inherently good, they are all still idealistic and therefore have little to no facts to support the existence of a higher realm. These concepts are merely ways to describe patterns that we see in our personal view of the world. Another reason why meaning might fall short is that there is a lack of connection or relevance to the world that we live in. If Sophia spends all of her time in an abstraction, she would never be able to experience the reflections of these concepts in her everyday life. If she were to fully live in the world inside her head, she would never fulfill her needs of her personal identity. We need the other realm, but according to the philosophical mind, the higher realm does not need our earthly reality. Also, since the forms are so impersonal, they seem too distant for the everyday person, diminishing their importance in everyday life, especially in a culture that increasingly values individuality over that of the collective. The last failure of meaning is one that could possibly be the easiest to understand. This failure is the idea that all of the questions that are asked by the philosophical mind are questions that can never be fully answered. This leads to the thinker resorting to easier questions that have more concrete answers. Although Sophia did in fact arrive at the realm of forms, her question of what is it that stands the test of time and remains unchanged in harmony remains unanswered because she cannot fully answer it. 
The questions prompted by the philosophical mind are too difficult to handle, mainly because you can ask abstract and detailed questions, but you rarely receive a response that sufficiently answers the question. And because the questions asked by the philosophical mind have no effect on the material world, the entire process resides solely in the mind. Despite the struggles and confusions of finding meaning in the philosophic mindset, the intellect cannot deny the value of question and searching for meaning that the philosophic thinking process entails. Whether or not we can grasp the abstract concept of meaning, Sophia and other intellects like her find a sense of contentment in acknowledging a higher sense of unity, finding hope not in the world as it is, but in an enduring struggle towards perfection. I hope you learned a lot about the philosophical worldview with Sophia and I. Thanks for watching.